Disclaimer. This video is part of a class project. The information covered was collected with the sole purpose to expand on the understanding of the effects of the different exercises in the body. The information will be discussed next is not a professional opinion nor the techniques should be taken seriously. Welcome. My name is Julian Trevino and today I will be covering the anatomy and physiology of the back squat. In the following video, I will cover the following muscles, joints, body position from upper and lower body, the movement of mechanics, progression and regression, and the common mistake. Okay guys, for the back squat, the muscles that we use in the back squat are the quadriceps, the gluteus maximus, bicep femoris, rex femoris, the vastus intermedius, laterals, and medius. So now that we already covered the muscles, now we're gonna jump into the joints. And the joints we use for the back squat are the hips, the knees, the ankles, and the foot. All right guys, now that we already talked about the muscles and the joints, we're gonna jump into body position. And we're gonna start with the upper body. For the head position, line of the neck is perpendicular to the ground and the gaze is aiming forward. For the thoracic position, the chest is held upwards and the shoulders blades are retra retracted. For the trunk position, trunk is parallel to the tibia while maintaining a slightly neurotic lumbar spine. And now we're going to cover the lower body. For the hip position, line of the hip will parallel to the ground for the frontal plane through the squat. Knee position. Lateral aspect the knee does not cross the medial manilus for either leg. Tibial progression angle. Knee does not excessively pass the front of the foot. Foot position. The entire foot remains in contact with the ground. All together, the squat should look a little bit like this, and it should be performed on this way. Start with your feet a little bit shoulder apart, and for me, I use a little bit wider ankle stance because it's more comfortable for me. Okay, in this position that you are in, just make sure you drop your hips on the sides, make sure you drop them to the back. I use my hands to stay a little bit more stabilized. Drop the hips and try the squat in this position. Then go up. Let's try to hit the 90 degrees here in the leg. And let's try not to overpass the toes as much. And then go up. Try to keep your back straight, facing forward. Go up. The shoulders a little bit to the back to keep some balance. And up. From the front, let's make sure the hips look good and the knees. Let's try not to bring the knees inside because it can affect you on the, on the long run. So let's try to keep the knees nice and push them to the outside. All right guys, this is how it should look after you do a squat. All right, now moving to the movement mechanics. For the descent, utilize the hip hinge, the strategy and control the constant speed throughout the descent. Torso remains upright. And for the ascent, shoulders and hips rise at the same, time, at the same constant speed to return to the start position. As in descent, timing ratio is at least 2 to a 1. Alright guys, now moving into the progression and regression. For progression, it can be starting from an air squat, that it can be with no weight. Going into a barbell squat, adding more resistance and weight. For a regression, from a barbell squat to a TRX assistant squat. So a barbell, we can start with a lot of weight and we can work it all the way down into just doing body weight and being assisted by a TRX. All right guys, for the common mistakes, we have feet rather than the width of the shoulders. Raising the heels during the squat.
All right, guys, so hopefully by now, you guys have a better understanding of the anatomy and the physiology of a back squat. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to check our citations that we have at the end of the video. Thank you for watching.